take an edge of that, quite literally. And we need to take that as a stuff of the neck and say, we want to be more involved in these things. The Federation needs to be one of the key um, constituent parties in there. I've got no time for this idea of a, of a, of a, 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 a Crofters Committee on the NFU. <coughs> it's nothing to do with farming. It's about agricultural use of the land. And crofting is a key cultural facet that we need to, to push. Cooperation is, is, is almost built in. It's almost hardwired into our genes, these things. I find it really sad that we no longer have an agency pushing the idea of machinery corps, machinery groups in the communities. You know, we've had a tractor for years, and it just lay there. And we, we used to have a dozen times a year, but mainly it was collecting rust. But other people have, have a use for that in the community. This guy who, who actually does big bales and wraps big bales for us now, he does it for half the folk in the village there, for these things there. We need to make more. We need to be proactively engaged in stimulating cooperation, whether it's sheep stock clubs, whether it's cattle stock clubs, whether it's machinery groups, whether it's making use of the, of the community land trust to actually use that as the lowest form of democracy in the country to make our impact. Tourism, we often look at that as a mixed blessing because we get so many people coming in there and the, you know, if I see one more motor home with a, with a German label on it and bikes on the back and kayaks in the roof, it just drives me nuts. Um, I, I, it was two years ago, a guy was in the, in the bar apparently in Tarbert, I mean, maybe, maybe this was apocryphal, maybe David will correct me if that's wrong, but he was in the bar in Tarbert and he was boasting the fact he'd been here for a week and he only spent five pounds. <laughs> because he brought everything with him, you know? That does nothing to the local economy. But we are in pole position to be there and to galvanise that in a tourism that we think is to our advantage. Not a museum piece, not a showcase, but to make use of the, of, of, the, of, the, of the natural assets of the area. And one of them is renewable energy. The Golston Estate, where, where, I'm, where, I, live, where I stay, um, is, it, it is now has three turbines, just, just commissioned it recently, the, the, the third one commissioned recently. When these three are on, that will bring in half a million a year to this community. That will mean a whole game changer. We now have the community controlled land and we have a revenue to do something with it. And so when we meet, rather than go for, for cap in hand for grants and say, you know what, we're going to do this, and we're just bloody well going to do it. And we have the money and let's do it. Part of the money will be used to repay the turbines from the materials <coughs> bank, the, 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 the loan that we got for the turbines. Part of the money will be used to build up reserves for the, for the community trust. And a smaller part will be used for <coughs> community grants, small, small grants within the community, to get things done for the benefit of the community. And this, it doesn't allow us to give money to individuals because of charitable status, but it can do that to groups within the community. And this is key because within the community, as Mark said this morning, in, in his admirable summation of the, of, of the report, the push for diversification and multiple activity, multiple job holding, has got to be the key within the communities. We have people who are taxi drivers and, and uh, you know, mechanics and teachers, the you know, professor, who has a croft and who's working in these things. Right? And that is, a, that is an aspect of these communities which you don't get in bigger areas. We don't get. If you're looking at the area from Barvis to the north to the Buck of Lewis, there are more people in that area than there are, uh, population-wise, from Ullapool right round the, the north coast up to, the, up to Durness and right up to Onte Tongue. And the reason is because there are crofts there. They have a legacy of, of homeowners and building and coming back to the crofts. The high-tech facilities that we have just now, as Fiona said, I've been an advocate of this most of my life, it, 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 is, it really needs to be taken advantage of. And people moan, we included about not having good broadband. There is so much you can do even without that. You take this by the skirt of the neck and look at these things. We now in Stornoway, for example, have, have television production companies. We have call centres, we have areas where people actually work overseas from the Western Isles. Now, we're only scratching the surface of that. The potential for that is enormous. The big game changer in all of this, from my book, since, that, since we did 30 years ago, Jim Hunter and I were in the sky advocating Daft's estate, for example. I think they still have the scars to show for it, Jim. Um, because they didn't want it then, 30 years ago. Okay? But now, the big game changer is community land ownership. <coughs> it, it, it provides a level of accountability and democracy. But it's hard work because it's driven largely by enthusiasm, by volunteers. When I was down in, in Tarbert a couple of years ago at the, at the conference David had in, in, in Tarbert with the Community Land Foundation, um, 
I was astonished how many of the old SCU faces I found there who had been popped up in other areas. Because it's the nature of subversive activity that you use whatever networks you have. And we need to do that. We need to challenge that. And stop bitching about other people not doing it for us. There's a long history within crafting communities of the self-help and the self-organisation of complex systems. Crofting law is complex. It's no more complex than tax law. So we shouldn't be afraid to get stuck into it and get, get to deal with these things. The heritage that we have is very particular. And the heritage that we have has to be used by us, not exploited as a, as a, as a museum piece that people come there and, and, and poke fun at. And the difference between, for me, between here and Ireland is that every pub you go to in Ireland, there is music being played everywhere you go because they've realised the value of this thing and they've manufactured it to go through there. Here, it's much more low-key, behind the scenes. But things like the fashion have, have revolutionised the fact that young children come up there playing tunes, singing songs, making new drama, writing materials. So where are we going with crofting? Crofting, I think, has a rosy future, but it has to change. It's not the crofting of, of our grandfathers, our fathers, or even the crofting that we had 30 years ago. Crofting has a rosy future, I think. But it has to be a future that takes in more than that and looks at the issues as, they, as, they, as we confront them. We have to look at things, for example, like, you know, when a community-owned estate is bought and you get public money, they have to do an environmental impact appraisal. Why is that not the case for private landowners? Why is it possible to buy land and sell these things and actually have an asset strip the forest before you pass it to somebody else. That should be challenged. We should be looking at these things as we go through. I think we need to look at the, the future of, of things like renewables. The government's pulled the rug from that, from, from new, new initiatives because of the, the, the cut to the feed-in tariff. But I think we have to challenge these things and, and we'll look for ways that if we do have renewables, it isn't just about exporting to the grid, it's about using these things locally. Let's phone up Bill Gates and have him come to, you know, Harris or Lewis or whatnot and use lots of cheap electric for his, for his computer servers. Because to me, selling the electricity into the grid, you're still at the behest of those who control the grid. It's the same as when we used to sell, uh, you, know, you know, fish unprocessed from the islands or from, from the areas. You're selling the raw material for other people to add value to. So this slide is up again. It's on the internet for those who want to see it. It's a slide share. And if you disagree, I'll